Guys, today's video is monumental. It is a momentous occasion. I'm drinking water. No, that's not it. That is also momentous though. Very proud of myself. New Year's resolutions. The reason for today's video is my little baby boy Connor is one. He's won the audacity that my little baby is one years old, honestly. So I thought today to celebrate that we would make the ultimate best ever 26 million view chocolate cake. This cake looked so decadent and moist, rich, deep chocolatey flavor, like right out of Matilda. You know the cake I'm talking about, right? That, that cake right there, that's the ultimate cake. That's what we all want. So I thought to myself, self, we enjoy the chocolate cake that we already make. It is delicious, 10 out of 10, but is there a cake out there that's maybe a little bit better? I don't know. It's 26 million views and I read through a ton of the comments and everyone was talking about how absurdly delicious this cake is. So I'm like, well, guess we're making it. And there's an element of this cake that I'm just, I'm not personally sold on yet, but we're gonna make it, we're gonna try it because apparently it's good. It's just like, it wouldn't be my first choice, but we're gonna do it. So get comfy, cozy, grab your dog, your hamster, gerbil, chinchilla, I don't know. And make sure you subscribe, red button, bell, thumbs up, whatever it is, so you don't miss out new videos here every single Saturday. And now let's dive into this recipe. I'm very excited because when, are, when am I not in the mood for a chocolate cake, let's be honest. So first, water. By the way, this is the simple, simple modern or simply modern. No, it's simple modern, my bad. This is the cup that TikTok is obsessed with. And now I too am obsessed with it. It's in one of my TikTok videos. You can go check it out if you're interested. So step one, we need the dry ingredients. For that, Bowls. Guys, by the way, do you like the fact that I expanded my <laughs> sweatpants variety? I have green now. I know, I know, I'm proud of me too. This one. <laughs> my biggest bowl. Because I read through the instructions already and I know I'll need a big bowl. And so what goes into the bowl? Glad you asked. We are gonna start by adding 450 grams of flour. Bloop, get in there. And then we're gonna need, oh, hold on. Just thinking this through. I don't think I want this bowl. I think I actually want Francesca. I'm so sorry, Francesca. I don't know what I was thinking. Sometimes these things happen. You just pick yourself up, you keep going. And so, as I was saying, 450 <laughs> grams of flour. Then we're adding in 650 grams of sugar. This is so much sugar. Three cups, I think. That's insane. Oh my gosh, that's so much. That's so much. I feel like you could do this with like half <laughs> that, but, um, we're gonna go with it. Starting with four eggs. Just a little bowl of eggos. One, two, three, and four. Washing hands. Then we have one and a half cups of buttermilk. Pouring that right on top. And then the one change that I made to this recipe, the original called to just use warm water in the recipe. And I was reading through a lot of the comments and a lot of people were saying, instead of the warm water to use coffee, which is what I would normally use for making cakes because it really brings out a strong chocolate flavor. You really don't taste the coffee at all. Although I am going to warm it up. It needs to be warm, apparently. Warm coffee. In you go. Next on the list, we are gonna add in a half cup of oil, which is also different than how I make my cakes because I use butter, not oil. And you wanna make sure you're using a very neutral oil if you do use this recipe. Vegetable oil, canola oil, I think grapeseed is also pretty neutral. No olive oil. <laughs> Learn from my experience. That does not taste good. Put that in there. And then last but not least, two teaspoons of vanilla. Boop. Then we're going to mix this all together on medium speed until it is just combined. She said to kind of scrape down the sides as you get closer to it becoming like a cohesive mixture. Cause again, you don't want to overmix once it has the flour in there. So that is what we are doing. I'm scared this is gonna go everywhere. Yep, it is. Hold on everyone. Protecting myself and my kitchen and also Francesca from herself. Ta-da. Okay, I'm going to scrape down the sides. I feel like there's just a lot of flour that's not incorporating here, like right at the bottom. Just mixing together everything at the top and just leaving all the flour at the bottom to fend for itself. Okay, I think I've pulled up all of the batter off the bottom. And now we are going to divide this batter into three separate 
cake pans because we're gonna make it nice and layered. And we need to make sure that we butter and also dust the inside of the cake pans with a little bit of cocoa powder just to make sure that everything doesn't stick to the outside. So let's go get ourselves some cake pans. Francesca again, always a pleasure. Now I've already put a little bit of, I actually used a like a Pam spray this time instead of butter, but I'm gonna put a little bit of cocoa powder on now. Just the lethal dust thing. And I'm gonna use any of the extras to dust around the other cakes. Get in there. And now we're going to split up all the batter and she recommended taking about three cups of batter into each of the cake pans and that basically evenly divides it. So we're gonna see if that works. One cup of batter, ah, ah, ah. Every time I measure anything when I'm baking. Thank you, oven. And I know my oven still doesn't have a name, but I'm kind of leaning into the name oven. It's not conventional, but it works. More like convectional. Get it? This looks like such a nice, thick, delicious, deep, chocolatey batter. I'm very excited about this. Oh my goodness, I think she's right. It is basically, yeah, exactly three cups. Love that for us. Look at my countertop. Oh uh, yeah, that's about right. And now we're going to stick these into the oven, 350 for 30 minutes, and then we're gonna go on to what I believe is a controversial choice for icing. All right guys, cakes are done. They're now coolie over there. Be with you in a minute. Because now we are going on to the icing. Frosting? No, I think it's frosting. And this one is super interesting. It's not something I would have personally picked for myself for a chocolate cake, because it's sort of like a chocolate cream cheese frosting. And typically for me, I like like a nice buttercream frosting. That's just like a preference thing. But I was like, I'm gonna try it because everyone says it's absolutely fantastic, so. Here we are. Oh, and okay, so also, because I'm not 100% sold on this frosting for the cake, I actually did a half recipe of the chocolate buttercream frosting that I typically would use for a chocolate cake, and I figured we'd like split it down the middle, and that way we can taste test, we can see if it's really truly better with the cream cheese frosting versus the buttercream. It's over here, and I've been very good, haven't eaten you know, too much of it. So I'm only gonna be making a half recipe of this cream cheese frosting. So there is a larger amount in the original recipe, just so you know. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to cream together three quarter cup of butter and four ounces of softened cream cheese. I'm gonna go right in, bloop. And we are going to beat these together until they're nice and fluffy. Right, that looks good. Quick little scrape down the side here. Now I'm gonna add in a three quarter cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. And this is about the same amount as I use for my buttercream frosting that I enjoy making. Um, but I found that a huge difference was that they had a ton more butter in their recipe, including like with the cream cheese as well. And then they used a lot less of the icing sugar, um, which I thought was really interesting. So it is going to feel, I, I think like very different. And so I'm excited to see which one's better. Again, food, science. And we're also adding in one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. Dip in there. We're gonna beat this together first. Again, do a little scrape. Scrape, 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 scrape. And now we're adding in about four cups or so of icing sugar or confectioner sugar or powdered sugar. What did I say first? Icing sugar? There are so many ways to say it. It's this stuff, you know what I'm talking about. The recipe called for seven to eight cups, so I have about four here. One cup at a time and beating until it's nice and smooth. And then we're gonna add in a little bit of milk at a time if it's getting not like too granular looking, you know? Ooh, that is looking good. Another scoop. I feel like I'm pro- It's a cloud of powdered sugar. I feel like I'm gonna need a uh, little bit of milk after this one. I'm gonna keep going until all of the icing sugar is combined. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. Yeah, you thought that was gonna fly off, but I stuck it down with some icing. Very different in terms of color, even though the ingredients are fairly similar, just because obviously this one has a little bit more butter in it, but this one has more icing sugar, so I don't know. And I didn't end up adding in a lot of milk into this recipe, just as a heads up. I added maybe, maybe a little less than a tablespoon, and it's a good consistency, so I'm excited. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically going to layer this cake, have these, and just do one half with the cream cheese and then one half with buttercream. Fortunately, they are different in color, so if I forget which side, 
I am working on, I should be able to tell. Let me know if you guys have a favorite frosting recipe. Do you like chocolate with chocolate? Do you prefer like a vanilla or something crazy? I don't know, like a lemon. Also, very proud of myself, have not tasted this icing yet, the new one. I did try the old one. I am strong, but I am not that strong. It is spreading really nicely. It's covering really nicely. And I am by no means an expert at frosting cakes. And this one is very smooth, very easy to spread and like just a really nice fluffy consistency. I like it so far. So I'm just gonna layer these cakes all up and then we bring in Christopher. <laughs> for the taste test. It's been so long since Chris has not been in one of these videos, taste testing stuff. I mean, to be honest, I would too. It's the best part. Okay, she is iced. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Oh, I'm so excited to taste it. Christopher, do you wanna taste some cake? Of course you do. That's not even a question. That's not a question. Look at it, ooh. She's beautiful. Yeah, three layers. Nice. It's yeah. fewer than 20 or whatever layers we did. I thought we agreed now to speak of that. So which one's the icing that we normally do? So this is our normal one. Okay. And then this is the one that has like cream cheese in it. So I figure we need to try a little of each just to see. Well, I guess. So. I mean. A lot of each. Maybe, I don't know. Look fudgy. Ooh, that looks so good. Look at that. So, the, well, hold on. But, I, but no, there's cake you, in no, front of me. No, we have to have the one that she made that this no. is the, the best ever her tried and true recipe, everything is the same except I added coffee instead of water. But that, I mean- just only right. That's, that's just science. Boop. Oh, really good. It is really good, but maybe it's just that it's the corner. But that's not that moist. No, but I was thinking just the icing. The icing was good. <laughs> the icing was the part that I feared the most for whatever reason. I was just like, cream cheese and chocolate. I don't know, that doesn't sound right. You're right, the edge is more- It's a little bit baked, yeah. I just get like a weird spot, like right in the center. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting an awkward triangle here. There we go. Yeah. Okay, now let's see. Night and mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. As always, never touch a corner piece. Don't be a rookie. That is so good. But is it as good as our go-to? Now again, this is the corner. This icing is so good. It is so decadent and fudgy. Mmm. It's too sweet. Might be, eh? It's too sweet. The fact is that this cake is very sweet, but the icing isn't as sweet. No. Yeah. This one, it's too much of both. I bet that's what it is with the ratios. I'm mm. interested if this cake would be just as good with less sugar in it. How much was it? Like three cups. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot. Okay. And I think ours only uses like two. Now that I've tasted it with that icing, now tasting the cake on its own, it is a very, very sweet cake. I would, I would cut the sugar in this. Do you like this cake more than our standard recipe. I need to like carve out just the cake. Cause it's nice and, it's nice and spongy. It's nice and dense. There's so much cocoa powder in here. It's very chocolatey, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure it's better. Would you make it again? Knowing that we have our recipe, okay. would you make this one the go-to chocolate cake? Ooh, instead of ours? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, I, I wouldn't. No? no. Why? This is nowhere near as moist and fudgy as the Matilda. Bruce Bogtrotter cake. That was legendary. It was a legendary Th level. This is this is a good cake, but it's not that. And it is a very fudgy cake. It I is. wouldn't say it's more fudgy than our recipe though. No, I wouldn't say so. That's what I was expecting, right? Like if, if this is like that cake, I was expecting a big difference and I don't really see it. Now, what about the cream cheese frosting? Cause I was not prepared to like this as much as I do. <laughs> I don't taste any cream cheese and it's wild. That's a great frosting. I do like it, and I, but I would be disposed to like that. Why? I like cream cheese frostings. In stark comparison to mine, it's so much less sweet, but mm. in the best possible way. I think at some point we gotta try our cake recipe with the cream cheese icing. Stay tuned on Instagram. Oh, that was good, thank you. You're very welcome, okay? Ta-da. Happy birthday to our baby. Yay. But this was really great. I really enjoyed this cake. It was a great opportunity to celebrate little Connor turning one years old. Also Valentine's Day, which is tomorrow, FYI. And who doesn't love a good chocolate cake for Valentine's Day? Make sure you check out these videos on the side in case you have missed any. I hope you guys are having an awesome, awesome day and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Love you all. Mwah.